Hey everybody, Nina here of She Knows SEO. We're going to dive kind of behind the scenes of this post I wrote, the 121 travel blog examples to inspire you in 2023. Name may change, it's not published yet, but I will link it in the description so y'all can find it. But I did some cool stuff here to like analyze competitors and I think it's good for people to know how to do that. So you can see I deep dived into the niche DA monthly traffic, primary traffic source, page speed, CMS, which is content management system, blog host, theme, monetization methods, and when it was founded. I wanted to use free tools for this so that anyone could replicate it because we're just getting an idea of our competitors. Is it going to be perfect and be exactly accurate? No, to some extent, only the host is gonna know every single one of these things about their own site, but it gives us some understanding of what other people in our broad niche or even in our specific niche are doing and to see how successful these niches can potentially be. I want everyone to treat this as a like inspirational experience, not a I can never do it experience. Because the top 20 posts on this list, they get a lot of traffic. They do very well for themselves. So I want you to be sure that you're not like comparing yourselves to them right off the bat. It's also why I included the founded date. That way, really, you're gonna get a sense of how long it's taken them to get to where they are today. Success doesn't happen overnight for any of these people, so let's put that out of our mind. So the very first thing I did was figure out the niche of every single one of these different sites. Now, for some, I had to assess myself. For others, um, they clearly stated it on their about page or their homepage. And for some, my amazing Facebook group, I asked if people would share their niche and their blog name with me, and they did, so I included a number of them as well. But for the top 20, it was all a manual check from their about page, homepage, looking at the top content they have, and then just looking at the general like theme of their site layout, like their menu, their structure, uh, their different pillar pages, all that. So here's a good example. We have Nomadic Mat. And Nomadic Mat site, my Chrome keeps freezing, there we go. Nomadic Mat site is pretty clear about what he's about immediately. Travel smarter, cheaper, and longer. He's into budget travel. We also see him wearing a backpack here. He also talks about backpacking. That's in his logo, immediately clear. Could be minorly more clear if it was in his menu bar, like at the top. Um, he has cleaned up his menu bar a lot, which is great because it was a disaster before. So maybe it just got moved out of the way, but he is very well known now. So to be fair, I think most people would kind of expect that of him. Um, and if you go to see like latest from the blog, you're going to find hostels, uh, places that are going to be less expensive, saving money with credit cards to like get travel points and stuff. Very clear, basically immediately what he's about. Of our top 20, it was pretty easy to figure out what their niche was, although some didn't have a clear name for it. There are some that like I might have called adventure, but they called it outdoor. Those are like little semantic things, but it was very clear what all of these sites were about. If we take a look at another one, we have Expert Vagabond. He is, here you can see adventure travel blogger, and or, sorry, adventure, ugh, adventure travel photographer, professional blogger, and digital nomad. His site, as we look up here, photography is a big part, and nomadic adventure travel digital nomad kind of things. We've got all of that happening very clearly. Those are his three pillars. If you dive deeper into it, you'll get more of a sense of like where he does this. Now his site's pretty old, it sounds bad, but it is an older site because there's a lot going on. Like they've, they've done a lot over time. Um, but here we see adventure travel, travel photography and digital nomad stuff. Again, very, very clear. So that's something to know for your own site as well. Then we have DA as our next metric that we're checking. DA is going to be domain authority, and I used Moz to check this because it's free and everybody can use it for their own site. So we're here on the Disney tourist blog right now, and I have Moz open up in the corner. It's a little bit small. Um, that's the way the Chrome extension works. You can also do it on the moz.com site, uh, but it will just tell you a number of what that blog's perceived authority is by their tool. It's a rough idea of how Google perceives it. So we got 68, very high, very good. Then to figure out the monthly traffic of these sites, I went to a site called SimilarWeb. Now I think it is important to note that SimilarWeb is a third party tool and every third party tool guesses at your traffic. They don't know for sure. So I actually decided to test three of my sites to see 
how accurate is it compared to my Google Analytics? And it was about 30% higher. It would over-report my traffic, which like, I'll be honest, I haven't really seen before. <laughs> Usually they significantly under-report. Um, so that was an interesting thing to note, but I did still use this tool because it is free. And because it's too hard to average out a bunch of different tools here, the numbers would be completely made up. We just wanna have kind of a comparison between the sites as we see them in front of us. I think that's the important thing here. The exact numbers are, we don't know. We won't have any idea. Only the site owner will actually know that through their own Google Analytics. Then for primary traffic source, I use SimilarWeb again to see where is their traffic predominantly coming from. I wanted to see if some bloggers did better on social media, if they did better from their like direct sources, which usually means more email list, um, or if organic search really is the best method, especially for these bigger bloggers. I also did PageSpeed and I just used the PageSpeed Insights tool. Um, web page test also works very well, I think better, but to be honest, it just takes a lot longer. And with all of these, uh, I started to run out of some time. So that's how I figured out their page speed and I just used the speed index score. Then we have CMS uh, and for CMS and blog host, I mostly used host advice, but I also did look into web hosting hero, AccuWeb hosting uh, and hosting checker. And don't worry, I'm gonna cover all these things like in a moment, it's just easier to run through them all together because some of them overlap. Then for the theme, I used a couple different things. What WP theme is that? That's literally a website. Satori Studio, another website, and then just manually inspecting the code myself to see what its base was. Then for monetization methods, I just went through and manually found these. So I looked for affiliate links, I looked for their ad network, um, especially figuring out which one they were with. I do list who like everyone's monetized with currently at time of recording. Um, I also looked on their work with me page to see what they offer um, in terms of like working with brands and companies. I looked for sponsored posts on their site. This was like definitely the most manual deep dive of just clicking on everything to figure out, okay, do they have a shop? Do they have tours? How do they make money on all of this? And I really did try to focus on stuff on their site, but if I say sponsored posts, sometimes that's also Instagram and things like that. Then I figured out when they were founded. So most of the time they listed this on their about page, but sometimes they didn't. And if they didn't, then I used Dupli Checker or What's My DNS to figure out when they bought the domain. Now, does that mean that like it might not have been an expired domain? It could have been, but in these cases, it doesn't seem like that's the case. So did my best. Um, I did do like a little bit of, um, what's it called? The Wayback Machine on the first couple, just to like make sure these were brand new names. But most of them started a ways ago. So it wasn't really, to my knowledge anyway, as popular back then to buy an expired domain, even by accident. So let's dive into how I did the monthly traffic and primary traffic. So over here, I have similar web open. This is a free thing to use. I do not, I've never paid for it. I didn't even have the trial. I don't really know why it says that. I literally signed up to this like two days ago, um, but whatever. So here, what you're gonna do is input a URL. I have paxlight.com here, uh, which is Gabby Beckford. She is a really, really amazing travel blogger um, and she is on our top 20 list. So here you can be able to find some information about it. You're going to see the total visits for a period that you set up here. So I set it for a one month period, especially because we've had such like weirdness with so many different months changing recently. I figured it was better to just set it to one smaller area. You can also select like where in the world the traffic's coming from. I didn't really care about that. I wanted total visits here. So I wanted to see, okay, how many people are going to this site, how many people are going every single month. And I also just wanted like a monthly data as well for that anyway. Then down here, I can also see like how much it historically was. Interestingly, similar web had like a major crash from June to August on every single site I looked at. Like it was, I, I don't know if something actually happened to the sites or if similar web is incorrect or like maybe they had an algorithm change, I don't know. But like almost every single one had this same kind of structure to it or like kind of paused in August and then dipped heavily in September. So that was really interesting to see. 
Um, you can also see like where uh, they're coming from. I didn't really care about that. What I wanted is channel overview. So here I was able to see, okay, what percent is coming from different areas? Gabby had one of the highest uh, percentages of direct traffic, which I think is largely due to her presence in other places. Gabby is on every social media network and I couldn't find anywhere where it says like how similar web classifies socials. Cause sometimes like, I know Pinterest sometimes gets lumped into direct sometimes and she does have a strong Pinterest. So perhaps this is more Pinterest and not just like actual direct links, but she does get a lot of traffic from her newsletter as well. So I don't know, but that's how I found those two things. I just wanted to get a rough metric. I think this is a really cool platform um, and I will definitely be using it more in the future. So next we need to do PageSpeed Insights. Very simple, just normal PageSpeed Insights. I did the test. So here we have Pax Light again. Um, and I looked at the speed index because typically the speed index is going to be somewhere between the first contentful paint and the largest contentful paint because it's not always usable at 8.4, like the first contentful paint area. So I tried to do this one when it was in the middle, but I would note if like I could tell that it had loaded, but something weird just wasn't. So like for here, Mediavine took a minute, but it was usable much earlier. So something to keep in mind. But we just wanted to do a rough comparison and see like what trends there are amongst the top travel blogs in terms of a number of different things. <laughs> so then, what was next? Uh, then we had host advice. This is a really cool system. I really like using it to find it at the top now. There it is. So host advice, you're just going to like input the URL, click find hosting, and it's going to explain to you, okay, who's the hosting provider? So this for me would be Lyrical, for other people it might be Bluehost, um, SiteGround, Cloudways, whoever, it'll show up here. You can see that uh, she is using Cloudflare as her CDN. Sometimes sites using Cloudflare, it'll just say blocked because it's like you can't see anything. Um, so not always super helpful. And then sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't show the CMS system here. And if it didn't, I would just do some deep diving into the code. Uh, it's usually pretty easy to tell pretty quickly. Uh, if you just like inspect the page and then search for WordPress, if it's a WordPress site, it will say WordPress. <laughs> so very, very easy. Everything on our list um, of the top 20 turned out to be WordPress sites. I didn't know that going in, but I mean, I would expect it, especially since they have ads on their site. Then to figure out the domain age, um, you can see the domain name age checker. You just put it in and it will tell you the year. And then this one, oh, these are for theme. So um, what WP theme is that? If you put in the URL for Gabby, she has a custom theme, so it doesn't show up. But if I put in, uh, who is another one of our top 10 or 20 that had, oof, let's just do Disney tourist blog. I don't remember which ones had custom themes and which one didn't. Yeah, here we go. So here it'll actually tell you like what the theme is. You can actually click in and see it and buy it if you want, but it's going to show you the exact theme. For many of them, it won't show the customizations. I give it as a child theme, but it's based on Genesis if the child theme is custom, but then you would still know it's on Genesis or Generate Press or whatever. So that also helps you kind of get an understanding of how these guys are running their stuff. And then this one is much simpler. If you just click WordPress theme detector input, click the button. It just tells you like one sentence. I like this one a lot because beneath where it tells you the theme details, um, it goes into the actual plugins that it found. And sometimes it has like extra stuff that it found. That's cool. A lot of them use WP rocket guys, just so you know, <laughs> I'm a big fan of WP rocket. Okay. It was not this slow before. Oh, here we go. So it looks like it's using a custom or heavily modified theme. Let me just grab, oh no, there's this custom too. I think this one was You'll see all the details on this beneath each one in the post uh, that again, I will link in the description. There you go. So here you can see, okay, this is the theme. If you click on the theme homepage, you're going to go and be able to get it for yourself if you want. Easy peasy. Um, so that's basically what I did here. Uh, now for anyone who's wondering how I picked out the top 20 and even the other uh, 100 and one, I think beneath it, uh, I did a couple things. So I went on to builtwith.com and figured out sites that were on Mediavine and on Raptive that had 
bunch of different metrics. Over a million social followers, over 100,000 social followers, um, were in the top percentage of traffic getters, uh, made a bunch of money from products, things like that. I tried to figure all that out. Um, I also just went off of sites that I was very familiar with. I tried to keep it to sites, especially in the top 20, that had over 250,000 page views a month, but I included two that didn't, that are a little bit more unique. Gabby's site is included in that, um, because I don't think traffic is the only metric to figure out like success, and Gabby is very open about her income and very clearly successful, so something to remember. Um, but yeah, so I use stuff like that. And then I also just did, I have two different ways of finding blogs who are on Mediavine or Raptive with certain code on Google. Um, I have a blog post about that too that I will also link in the description for Mediavine. The one for Raptive I only teach in my SEO roadmap course, uh, which I'll also link if you guys want to join. There is an upcoming sale for Black Friday. So if you want to save some money on it, uh, it will be for the first week of November only in 2023. After that, the sale is over and it will not be happening again for that price. So that's how I found these. All of this is meant to be educational. No hate to anybody, no criticism to anybody. I noted some of the things that I enjoyed, some of the things I didn't enjoy. Again, these are my experience and my opinion. Like my understanding of what works for the user in Google. These people may have different opinions, um, different research, and that is totally fine. This is all just meant to inspire and inform. It's not meant to be rude to anybody. I just want everyone to be able to learn. And I think doing deep dives like this is really important to get a variety of perspectives on, um, yeah, on our niche and how things are working. So I hope you learn lots and uh, you dive down the rabbit hole as deep as I did, <laughs> examining all your competitors and finally figuring out what that beautiful theme is that you're obsessed with that you really, really want, but you couldn't figure it out. So I hope this helped and you guys enjoyed it. Um, please do check out that post linked in the description to see all of the different blog niches because like there were so many. I didn't know some of these existed and I am very happy and proud to be a part of such a cool industry where so many things exist. And if I missed out on any that like you've heard of like some really cool, interesting niches, please feel free to leave them in the comments of that post. Um, I love learning about other niches. So I think it'd be really cool to figure out what other interesting travel things are out there. Okay. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you soon.